mentioned um, just some more quiet spaces that the people who do all the work in Turkey may not be distracted. And then to do that, you could make like a switch to sport collaboration in kind of like a full stop area. And then better temperature control to match the safety zones. So then concluding, um, the noise quality was pretty much the rate of concern when it came to um, concentration. And that organizing a better layout would help with this. Um, and also overall, there was a need for more inspiration in the office. Questions for this team? back to earlier in the presentation you have you had a photo of the space I believe okay let's look at this we would call this a open office although it's linear so that the worker at the far end would not be exposed to anything going on at the near end, but any given worker, except maybe at the very ends of the space, would be exposed to what's going on at workstations on either side. Is that, is that more or less correct? Now let's go to the findings from the focus group, the dislikes. Oops. These observations arguably are paradigmatic of the kind of problems that come up with an open space or open office. Noise, distraction, inability to concentrate, interruptions, and problems with making, with, with privacy in terms of phone calls. That's, that's what you've got here. Now, which two of you work there? All three of you? Those two. Oh, those two. <laughs> now, do these reflect your own experiences at the space? Yeah, we have them outside. But I'm usually the person distracting everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the instigator, not yeah. the victim, huh? <laughs> Let me ask you this Do your managers? Do they have sensitivity to the, these problems? She's usually able to zone it out. I don't know. She has a lot of patients, so. <laughs> Does she work at one of these stations? Yeah. Oh, she so. works at the one closest to you. So, like she, the so she's not in a private office? No. <laughs> okay. So she's sharing the pain or the. Sometimes she's But she's usually distracting as well. She always has a bear cam on. She's from Alaska, so everyone comes to her desk to watch the bears. To watch the bears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or she's well, she does have pain all the time. So would you characterize that as a positive distraction? Yeah. yeah. That would be exciting. <laughs> Interesting. Well, this being a university facility, sort of uh, reluctant to conclude that there is going to be any changes. Our building is so old, though, yeah. so I don't know. It's like if you look at the facilities management map of like all the buildings that need renovation, ours is in red, so that means that we definitely need something. But the president probably doesn't care. He's on the second floor, so he's fine. <laughs> How about that? It's okay, me and Eric are friends. He wants to be with his friends. Any other questions? Let's give this team a hand. <laughs> team seven.
All right, so we decided to use our, our presentation on the uh, Target Express that is in Dickey Town, kind of at the corner of, what is it, 15th and 4th? 6th. 6th? Somewhere over there in Dickey Town. Um, yeah, you know where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every student knows where it is. Uh, so our design example is uh, these super cool high-tech water bottle fillers. Um, so basically, um, it influences behavior because it makes you more likely to bring a water bottle because it's easier to refill than having it like at an angle with the old ones that have like no water pressure. Um, and on most of them, that like top right where there's that little um, green screen, that tells you like how many like, water bottles you've saved or like plastic water bottles you avoided using just by like the water that comes out. Um, and so it's um, better for the environment. Um, and then people are drinking more water because it's easier to refill. Um, and yeah. All right, so we'll go over the description of the Target Express in case any of you for some reason haven't been there. Um, then heuristic, usability and perception based approach, or conclusions, comparison to the uh, quote unquote design claims from Target's website and some recommendations that will definitely not be implemented because it's Target and we have no power over Target. Yeah. <laughs> um, so here's uh, what it looks like. So they have one uh, tiny little entrance with just an automatic door um, and then you walk in. This is like right by the front. Um, when you walk in there's immediately like the stuff that you don't need but is right there like another gopher shirt, um, or um, that's typically seasonal stuff, and then there's clothing, pharmacy, those type of goods, um, and then it goes to more food um, once you get near the back. Um, and then over on the left side is this ginormous electronics section, um, and then like home goods, housing kind of things, um, and then um, like drinks, and that kind of stuff is on the back left. Um, the pharmacy has like the same hours pretty much as any other pharmacy that um, so you guys want to see. Did you have to ask permission for these photos? Uh, these were that, that that stolen from oh. Google Photos. Yeah. <laughs> these, were grabbed. Okay. These, these were grabbed. I don't know if they got permission, but that guy doesn't look really happy, so probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it's approximately 20,000 square feet, um, approximately. 15% of the size of a normal target. So it takes away like sporting goods. There's not too much of that. There's like maybe like a half section with like maybe a single dumbbell um, and like one U lock. Um, and it doesn't have as much of like um, houseware. Like uh, there's not a ton of plates or like the fancier brands. Um, I was also reading that it's has more of the Target brand um, of things like the generic brand. So rather than having Dayquil, Musinex, like all those like big name ones, they'll have like more options for their, um, I think it's like up and up or up something like that. Um, that's like the Target brand. So it's typically same exact thing, just cheaper. So students, because we're in this college town, it's more likely to be catered for students. Um, it was the this Target Express was the first of many to come. Um, there's a few kind of all over the country now, um, and these small format stores are different depending on where they're located, like what is included in the store. All right, so the heuristic approach, um, we chose a couple things that we thought were kind of most pertinent to a Target Express. Obviously, workplace kind of stuff. Um, most of the people, except for the employees that are working there, most of the people going there, doesn't really matter if you can interact with colleagues because you're not working there. Um, I would not recommend turning your laptop and trying to do some homework. Um, so they have windows on two walls, but the daylight doesn't really actually get that far into the store, which means you lose track of time and fall into the target rabbit hole of just browsing aisles for hours on end and never knowing what time of day it is, and then you leave and you're like, oh wow, it got dark three hours ago. I didn't even know. Um, so yeah, it's mostly artificial, really harsh kind of lighting. But it is adequate for shopping, so you can easily read like the small print on the back of whatever it is you're buying. 
Um, the, it's kept at a relatively moderate temperature, but it can get pretty warm in the winter and pretty cold in the summer because they kind of pump up the AC and the heating. And of course, you have no control over the temperature. So like, I'm cold. Well, target employees not going to help you with that. Um, yeah, the air quality, because there's only that one sliding door and that's a double kind of uh, sliding door, there is no fresh air. So again, it can get pretty stuffy, especially in the winter with the heating on. Um, there's kind of, it's, it's of course the normal target red and white color scheme um, with lots of visual clutter from signage and sales tags and things like this is new or that is new. Um, and yeah, you have basically no control over the space, but you're probably not spending that much time there. So it's not as huge of an issue as it would be if it was a place where you spent eight hours a day working. Unless of course you are a target employee. <laughs> So you, for usability testing, we have a focus group. We had four subjects. All of our students, um, two female and two male. Um, the female uh, students um, both went there frequently, and the male students, um, one had been there, had never been there, and then one had been there like a couple times. Um, and then the same subjects we used for our um, perceptual analysis. So um, I asked them what they liked about the environment, and I found out that um, the, the number one thing that it was convenient, it was close. Um, it felt that it catered for college students, you know, with ping pong ball, mixers, and um, backpacks, and you know, notebooks and necessities like that. Um, they thought that it had a pretty decent selection um, for the selections that they did have. Um, that they get to the store pretty fast, um, in and out. Um, they thought it looked really nice, really clean, um, nice, pretty reasonable temperature, and that they felt like, okay, like, this is somewhere we're gonna buy goods of a higher quality. Um, they really like the bike racks outside for kind of like an easy commute in and out, not very, not a lot of uh, options for parking outside that were free, so the bike racks were a nice implementation, and then they really liked the farm pharmacy for New York State. They didn't like um, the food selection. Uh, one member was vegan, so he said there wasn't really much of a vegan selection. Um, another member who didn't like the electronic section, who felt like uh, I'm not going to come to Target Express to buy, you know, a speaker or, or a phone cable. I'm going to go buy that on Amazon. I feel like that would be an area where they could put like a vegan section. For example, um, <laughs> it was the same person. Um, they thought it was very expensive compared to the Cub or Aldi or or another Target just down the block. The prices are all a dollar fifty less. Um, and the poor alcohol selection. I think you can only buy a light beer. Sorry, express. Uh, oh, and only one entrance, so you can access. Um, what would they change about it? Um, they wanted to add more bike racks outside because there's only a few, and, and during the busier hours they were all used up, but throughout the other hours they said it was pretty open. Um, they'd add another exit, and they would ex replace like kind of sections with a more accommodating food selection, whether that be a vegan section. That's up to Target. Um, <laughs> and then the biggest thing that they were they were saying was. Um, and they all they all like this idea. One of them brought it up was that the it's hard to know when one of the little self checkout stations is in use. So they said um, they have a light that says if it's working. So if, if it's if it's green, it's either empty or someone's using it. And if it's red, it's not operable. But they should say it's, it should be red when someone's using it, so that the green ones indicate ones that are open and you can. Um, so we use the same um, participants for the perceptual survey. Um, so it's on a like it scale, one to seven, seven being they agree with the most or it's the best quality and one being the lowest. Um, so the overall store quality, just that general statement, um, it, it was four and a half, so um, kind of on the higher end of neutral, um, that it was just like fine as a word to use. Um, natural lighting was typically average because it's nice if you're like right by the windows, like over by like the juice section or like the other end of like the home goods. But if you're over by the pharmacy, it's like not as much. Um, it's roughly a comfortable air, comfortable temperature. Um, they um, three for the air quality, so there's not a ton of fresh air and you can't get stuffy. Um, visual clutter was. Um, they didn't like the visual clutter, um, so there's just like a ton going on. Um, and then there's uh, 
um, personal space was terrible because um, people have no sense of personal space when they're shopping and um, yeah. Yes. Well, you bonded it to that show. Um, and then for design claims, so like kind of what small format store, um, like what Target said, are the perks of going to a small format store. Um, it's easy to navigate throughout the store. There's a ton of visual clutter. However, those signs are um, beneficial because you can see this aisle has this in it and um, in that sense and the lines to check out um, are not short. So they all disagreed with the reasonable or short. Um, it can snake through quite a bit of the store. Um, and then the store um, roughly has the items that they need to buy, um, but it is difficult to determine um, if something that you want is in that Target Express, um, not like an actual Target. Um, and then the lighting and visual aesthetic is neutral. It's kind of like meh. And then um, they feel generally safe walking through the store. Um, okay, so some conclusions we came to. Um, from the heuristic approach, from the, yeah, the lack of daylight can make you lose track of time. Obviously not as bad as in one of the super targets where you can literally wander for hours. Um, very harsh artificial lighting, kind of stuffy in the winter due to no fresh air. And there, you don't have control over the environment, but you're probably not spending too much time there, especially with it being a smaller target. So it's not as big a deal to get a little cold or a little warm. Um, but the lighting's not great because you'll probably be leaving in like 20 minutes anyway. Um, reusability, we found this to be the most useful because like the students are saying today, you have one idea or a couple ideas about um, what you're studying, but you never really know what the user's going to bring up. So this kind of brought up a lot of the issues and a lot of things that they like that we can really see. So we saw what they value the person's store. So the pharmacy was one section and the kind of the student section, the kind of home goods section was another area they value. The area they didn't like, uh, the electronics section and a couple of people have some mixed thoughts about the food sections. Um, and we gain insight that new possible solutions, such as the, um, the self checkout solution. Um, slightly above average overall perception of the store. Um, the lines can become long. Um, they would enjoy um, more natural lighting and fresh air. The strengths, um, yeah, so there's a lot of signs and labels. It's a pretty streamlined store with one main central aisle and goes out to the side, so it's kind of pretty easy to go down the center and look left and right to see if the aisle has what you need, as opposed to like a giant target where you're kind of snaking around the whole store. It's bright enough to see all the items, even if it is artificial lighting. Um, the self-checkout makes it a lot faster, plus the self-checkout is kind of in the same place as the normal checkout, so you go to whoever's open as opposed to picking one at the beginning, like where it's in a main store where it's normally separate. Um, it contains a lot of essential student items. They seem to have tried to target it to what they think students need. Whether they always meet that goal is kind of questionable. Some of the stuff I'm like, what student would ever want that? Um, the pharmacy is definitely a plus, and there is parking, even though it's not free. If you are driving and are buying a lot of stuff, there is parking available. They do have a free parking lot. Oh, they do? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, it's I don't a have a car, so sorry. Yes. Um, and then some shortcomings, the lines tend to become long, and the store can get overcrowded at busier times, um, and things can be, um, shelves can be slightly empty if they haven't restocked at the time that you're going. Um, poor food selection, there's like nothing really fresh, um, and what is there that's fresh is not good quality. Um, tends to get stuffy, prices can be inflated due to the demand in a small format store, so you might be paying 15 cents more for something um, versus like a typical store. Um, narrow selection, so maybe the item that you want, you can't, that you can typically find in Target, maybe just isn't your new small format store, um, and then it's not somewhere that you would want to buy alcohol, it's not like actual alcohol, it's like 3 2 beer. So. Okay, so um, so they, they had a couple design claims. These were found in kind of a press release from when the um, store first came out. So bright lights and clean aisles. Yes, the emphasis on bright lights. Um, the aisles can they tend to be kept pretty clean, but when it gets pretty you know really busy, sometimes you'll find items that people have reshelved where they're not supposed to be. 
Um, team focus on helping them find everything they want to need. This is kind of like targets promised for everyone at all targets. Yeah, it depends on the employee, but generally they're, they're pretty decent. Um, and their big thing was that it was built to address the pain points faced by students going on quick shopping trips. Yes and no, there is less wandering around. If you know that they have what you want, it's really easy to dart in and out and quickly get it. But they are missing some important things, and if you don't know where the item is, you have to like look online or ask someone to see if it's in that store, and then if you only wanted one thing, you went there, they didn't have it, it can be pretty frustrating. Like, why don't they have this clearly necessary thing? Some recommendations would be to add s signal lights or like a little screen that says self-checkout three is ready. Um, and then turn heating down in the winter to decrease stuffiness and uncomfortability. Um, make the lighting softer, include maybe a navigation kiosk near the front where you could search for bananas or I don't know, like toothbrush holder, like something really random that you may not have. And then you can see like where they're located. Um, then maybe add an additional entrance or exit to eliminate traffic jams um, with people stuffing things into the backpacks like right by the door. Okay. That's all she wrote. <laughs> Questions for this team? Well, a couple obvious questions. One of you made reference to prices being lower at a nearby target. What, what, what was that about? So, um, I personally shop at the Target in um, Roseville, and it's just down, just down the way. It's like five minutes from where I live. It's about it's an equal distance from Target Express, so I go there because there's a larger selection. But I've noticed that I've compared prices, and like a pack of gum, for example, costs like two dollars at Target Express, but it's like a buck forty at this other Target. You're paying so, for convenience, basically. Yeah. yeah, you're paying for the convenience for sure. Like, I'll still get things if it's like, oh, I need to go pick this up before class. Like, I'll still buy something at Target Express. But like grocery shopping returns, I think that at other Target just because the prices are higher. Um, yeah, for certain things they're the same, but there'll be a lot of times if you search online. It'll say see price in store if it's an item you can't get shipped to you, and that those will be the prices that vary completely depending on the location and kind of you know time of the year and stuff like that. So you guys well, I have an price. alternative uh, conclusion. I'm not disputing Devin's observation, but I would say they're exploiting students. Oh, I mean, right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's like absolutely. it's like supply and demand too, though, because like. The eggs are always out of stock when I go to Target Express, and they're like a dollar more than if I were just to go to the Target in Roseville. So, but a lot I of rest my case. <laughs> cars. You know, if you live in Diggy Town, you don't have a car. That's one of the only places you can get cars. Yeah. Kind of groceries. Food you don't yeah. think? Yeah. You don't think they know that? Oh, they totally <laughs> know that. And let's, we're just gonna give them the benefit of the doubt for that. <laughs> um, did anyone notice that you were doing this analysis? Did they know you were there? Well, when I did the focus group, I um, took people to the store and we walked around and had them all buy one thing. And then I took them back and asked them questions outside of Target. Because it was just kind of, I think it was kind of odd to like record their responses yeah. while we're in the Target asking things. So the answer, probably not? Probably yeah. not. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they're very, very interesting. Things. Let's give this team a go ahead. So just the heuristic thing, I, I kind of just walked around Target and I've been there a bunch of times and then afterwards I was like, what did I do? <laughs> Let's give this team a hand. Okay, thank you all. Uh, try to get the presentations to me by the weekend if you would, please.